I grew up in Seattle, Washington, in the Sephardic community there. My parents were both born in Seattle. My grandparents came from Turkey and the island of Rhodes. They were speakers of Judeo-Spanish, what Latinos called popularly. I came to Yeshiva University as a student in 1963. In 1967, we were married in New York. In 1969, I began serving congregation chair of Israel as a student rabbi. And then in 1970, I became the assistant rabbi. In 1977, I became the third rabbi. And then at some point, I became the senior rabbi. I retired from the synagogue in 2007. And I began a new institute called the Institute for Jewish Ideas and Ideals, jewishideas.org. And uh, I had a wonderful career in the synagogue, wonderful time. The congregation was composed of Jews of many different backgrounds, not only Sephardic. The custom of the synagogue is the custom of the Spanish and Portuguese community in Amsterdam. The congregation was founded in 1654 by Jews who came from Spain and Portugal to Amsterdam to Brazil, and then they came to a new Amsterdam, and that was the beginning of this congregation's history, and that was the beginning of official Jewish life in North America. This is the oldest Jewish congregation in North America. The first Jews that arrived here as a group were uh, this group of Jews who came from Brazil in 1654. They arrived here in September. There was no Jewish community to greet them. We know about them for the simple reason that they were somehow on a ship that got hijacked and it was, they were saved by a French man-of-war ship. And when they arrived in New Amsterdam, they were unable to pay all of the fees to the captain of that ship. And the captain took them to court. And that's how we know they were Jews. Uh, from the court records, they were sued, and the, they were poor people, refugees from uh, from Brazil. It was a, just finishing a war there between Portugal and and, uh, and and Holland. Then, long story short, they got permission to stay here, and the governor at that time of New Amsterdam was Peter Stuyvesant, who was not friendly to anybody other than his own religious creed, and he certainly did not like the idea of Jews settling here, and he asked them to leave. But they were a hardy, stubborn group of people. They said, we're going to stay. And they wrote to their co-religionists in Amsterdam. And the co-religionists in Amsterdam went to the Dutch West India Company and got permission for the Jews to stay here. And eventually they won rights. People don't realize that the first real civil rights battles on this continent were Jews. They had a fight for the right to stay here, to do business, to serve in the military, to serve guard duty, uh, to be regular citizens of the... Uh, Commonwealth. And they succeeded very well. The congregation was very small. Uh, and by 1730, there may have been 100, 125 Jews in town, not a whole lot. And they finally were big enough to build a synagogue building. The first building was built on a street called Mill Street. It doesn't exist anymore. It's way down. When we first came here, as I told you, Peter Stuyvesant wasn't keen on letting Jews stay here. And they were finally given permission to stay, but with very limited rights. One of the things that Jews were subjected to was they had to pay a tax in lieu of serving on guard duty. In those days, Wall Street was a wall, and they used to have, uh, to have guard duty against uh, Indian, basically the Indians on the other side. And uh, they wouldn't let Jews do serve guard duty. Jews had to pay a tax instead. So Asher Levy demanded the right to serve on guard duty. And not to have to pay that tax, but he wanted to be like everybody else, have the same rights and responsibilities. And ultimately he won. And that was a, an amazing victory, not only for the Jewish people, but for the development of freedom in America for all people. And many of the members of the congregation fought in the American Revolution. And you know, visit the uh, historic cemetery downtown. And every year around Memorial Day, we put flags on the graves of those of our members who fought in the American Revolution. So this is the only time, I believe, in history where Jews were part of the founding of a country as equals. You know, in other countries, in Christian countries and Muslim countries, Jews were second class or third class. They weren't given full rights. Here, in the United States, what became the United States, Jews, for the first time, actually had equal rights and, and flourished because of it and, and did, contributed very grandly to the uh, growth of this nation. Israel, because it comes to the prophets, the Hebrew prophets, it means a remnant of Israel. 
When the founders first came here in 1654, they didn't find any other Jews. There were a handful of them. They look around and they saw that we're just like a leftover, a remnant of Israel. But the prophet said that God will look after the remnant of Israel. God will protect the remnant of Israel. So they took this as an image that the, even though they seemed to be in a faraway land, there was no other Jewish community nearby, God will look after them. And lo and behold, the Lord was very kind to them. It started off as a country of freedom. It doesn't mean we didn't have problems, but it means that the principle was everyone in the United States is not judged by race or religion, everyone is judged by their merit. And even though the United States certainly did not fulfill that dream in every respect, not towards Jews, not towards blacks, not towards a lot of other people, nevertheless, in principle it stood, and that gave Jews and other minorities opportunity to flourish and grow and develop. So what we had in the United States is something unparalleled in, in the history of humanity. And Jews have flourished um, here more than in any other place because we've given, been given more rights and more freedoms.